Hey guys, welcome back. I uh, took a day off and I came back to work yesterday and I see that there is a centrifuge sitting here with its front faceplate open and people are apparently waiting for me to get here so that they can figure out what's going on with it. Well, let's take a look at the anatomy of a failure, uh, a centrifuge. And this is one that I haven't seen yet. And this is a failure that I've never seen yet. So this should be interesting. All right, first off, I've got the motor out of the centrifuge. You can see this here is just the front face plate. It's a interface board. This back here is both a power supply because you have mains that comes into it back here the black and white and right here you can see the three terminals for your motor output well when I got in um, a lot of the biomeds including senior biomeds thought that this one here had smoked brushes you know bad brushes which was causing the smell and that was what was also uh, causing the irregular noise but when I got in and I seen this terminal configuration on a, on a motor and then you see this, you should automatically know what type of motor that is. One, two, three phase. So it's a three phase motor, DC motor. And this one right here is your encoder or your Hall effect sensors. So that's your speed, speed feedback. And just to show it, there it is, brushless DC motor. No brushes. So that pretty much throws everybody's theory out the window. This is why it's so important to understand what type of motors are going on inside your equipment so that you know how to troubleshoot it better. Because just saying that the brushes are bad, I, you know, honestly, I haven't seen brushed motors in a centrifuge in a while for obvious reasons. These ones here are way more durable. The speed control, which is actually done right under here is the driver, is so much more efficient than brushed motors. And brush motors also will generate EMF, uh, which is electrical noise. And if you have a small centrifuge like this in a laboratory near a certain device, or if it's in an operating room, which they do have small centrifuges in some operating rooms, then the EMF is going to interfere with other devices like EEG. So brushless three-phase, very efficient, very powerful motor choice. And right here is a typical three-phase motor controller. You can see this right here is your bridge rectifier. And down here, you can see your driver. Now, I'm not going to take this heat sink off because I imagine there's some sort of heat sink compound under there that's sealing the two together. But that is your motor driver. This is a brushless three-phase motor. And what it is, here, you can take a look. So there is a weird dust that's collected on everything. And when I got in, this, this black, really fine dust was on everything. It was on the rotor. Here you can see the rotor. It was all over the rotor. It was up inside it. So what happened? Well, Here's the interesting thing about this type of centrifuge. This centrifuge does not have a uh, wobble detect or out of balance sensor. So what it does is it relies on the RPM of the rotor at a certain time or a certain amount of pulses. So it pulses to the motor, it expects a certain RPM. That will tell you if you got the correct rotor in and it also tells you if uh, there's any other problems. Well, if it's out of balance, you can see right here a ring of abrasion. So something's been going on. But this is also an all metal rotor. You can see there's a lot of moving parts in there. And inside these test tubes, you can see that there's debris and stuff inside the test tubes. So without having a balance sensor, and with these having so many moving parts, it's so easy for this to be out of balance. And if it gets up to a certain RPM, it'll just kind of power through because there is no vibration detect on it. So what happens is over the course of time, especially if the rotor is out of balance and they don't detect it, what will happen is your bearings 
I don't know if you can see that, but it is, it is wobbling. And when it wobbles, you have right here your permanent magnet for the motor, and your magnet will start to wear on your stator. It will rub, it'll etch, and it creates this really fine dust, and it gets all over everything. Well, over a period of time, it does wear it down. It will still run, and it will still sound, it'll sound really grindy. You can see right here, parts of the magnet have already snapped off. And whenever a particle breaks off of a magnet, it develops its own north and south pole, so it sticks to everything. Um, and that's unfortunate. So this one here has a bad motor. And uh, these type of motors, I do have a part number here, but the part number might not be for this exact nose cone. So that's one of the things you have to watch out for. So you might have to go with OEM because it might have this little pin drilled through. Who's to say? But this part number right here does not correlate with what the OEM part number is. <sighs> There's lots of reasons for that. But anyway, it's always best to start with the OEM and see how much it is, in which this case, this is what, an eight or $900 motor to get this guy back up and going. So in order for us to get this up and going, we have to clean all this dust out of here because it will contaminate everything and it can coat your board. Even though a lot of centrifuge boards are uh, conformally coated for moisture and dust, um, this one here does not really appear to have that you'd see shininess right here on some of these components so I'd say it's not conformally coated this dust is possibly probably conductive so we have to make sure that all this gets blown out vacuumed off very thoroughly before we apply power to it and then we have to clean the rotor because you can see the dust look at the dust inside here that's all dust guys see it so we have to clean each and every one of these with probably soap and water get it really really clean and really really dry and then we can power it up and check the vibration of the rotor once the new motor is installed because if it continues to vibrate you know um, things that spin will develop harmonics and at certain rpms certain structures will have their own frequency so You'll, you'll feel it up into a certain harmonic and then it will smoothen out and then as it speeds up even more it'll vibrate some more and then it'll reach its second harmonic. So you have to be wary of that. So feel for the vibration. Just because it smooths out does not mean it's okay. It just means that it, it made it through that harmonic. Okay, so the failure is out of balance, no balance sensor, motor wear, bearing wear, vibrations will create dust and dust gets on everything so <laughs> all right guys that's a little one for you that's a centrifuge failure if it happens to one remember it's probably happening to others so check the other ones as well all right thanks for watching